This video is sponsored by Incogni. Welcome back to soup season where guess what type of soup we're making with these two. To me, broccoli immediately calls for creamy soup and I promise this cheesy broccoli spinach soup hits the spot. Even though I bet you're not gonna guess my secret ingredient, but I'm also gonna try to turn this head of cauliflower into a very experimental blended soup with tons of potential because guess what? Making creamy blended soups is actually really straightforward and you can basically follow the same blueprint. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna start with my broccoli soup since that one is definitely a keeper. First, cut up your broccoli into roughly equally sized chunks. And since we're gonna blend it all up anyway, you should definitely keep the stem and don't even have to bother peeling it. Now let's talk alliums. Every soup base needs them, but instead of the plain old onion, let me highlight the often overlooked leek to you. Just make sure to rinse them well. Melt a knob of butter in a heavy soup pot, then add your leeks along with a few cloves of garlic and a pinch of salt. Leeks have a very delicate and pleasantly sweet flavor. Their fragrance will speak for itself. Once slightly brown, it's time to add our liquid. A lot of people like milk for creamy soups, which is totally fine, but I actually prefer water, and you will see why in a moment. Bring that to a boil first, then add in our hero ingredient, the broccoli. It doesn't need to be fully submerged. Since we're putting a lid on, it will basically boil and steam at the same time. I find 10 minutes to be the sweet spot where the veggies get nice and soft, but still haven't been cooked into oblivion. You might notice the broccoli lost some vibrancy, which is collateral damage, but don't worry, the green color will come back in the form of a mountain of baby spinach. You just wanna let that wilt for about a minute or two and that's it. Immediately transfer everything to a high-powered, very large blender. You don't wanna fill it more than two thirds. Work in batches if you have to. This is actually the time to add flavor to our soup and that's where the magic happens. Black pepper is probably not an unexpected choice. A little bit of soy sauce for umami won't shock anyone either, but what about mustard. Not only does it bring tons of flavor, a hint of tanginess and bite as well, it is also a natural emulsifier that will help with a creamy texture. But when it comes to that texture, the undisputed king is this. My secret ingredient, processed cheese. I know many of you might find this offensive even, but this type of cheese melts extremely well without clumping. It has the pungency we're looking for, and more importantly, it contains emulsifying salts, yes. And those create a wonderful, foolproof, creamy texture. Now, once everything is nice and smooth, season with salt and MSG to taste and give everything a final mix. One of the issues with cream soups, though, is mm. their homogeneity. They might taste great, but they look and feel very boring. Fortunately, both problems have the same solution, and that's toppings. Some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, a couple of microgreens, and the ever-reliable flavored oils. A few drops of garlic oil can do wonders, and some chili oil for a beautiful color contrast, for example, have never hurt anyone either. Now it's time to put on the soup season hat, because this one is definitely a keeper. Very well balanced, full of veggies, not too rich, and yet quite cheesy with a refreshingly bold note of mustard. Now some of you might say Andong everything tastes good as long as you put enough cheese into it which would honestly be a fair point. So what I want to do is take everything we've learned from this soup and apply it to another one and we're gonna go a completely different route. After a quick word from this video's sponsor Incogni. You probably heard about a massive data breach at some big company more than once on the news, am I right? And it's true, most of us have tons of personal information online and there are people out to get it. In fact, there's a whole industry of data brokers out there that aggregate, buy and sell your personal info. The consequences can range from robocalls and scams all the way to stalking. In short, people are making money with your personal data and you might not even know about it. But you're also not completely helpless. You can fight back by getting in touch with those data brokers and requesting your data to be removed. The only problem with thousands of brokers out there, that can take forever. And that is where Incogni comes in. It actually couldn't be more simple. All you gotta do is sign up, grant Incogni the right to work for you, and the rest is fully automatic. They reach out to all the data brokers that might have your data, request removal, and keep pushing back in case they object. 
There's even a super clean dashboard where Incogni keeps you updated on how every single one of those removals is going. If you want to keep your personal information from being sold, I highly recommend you check out Incogni using the link in the video description. If you use that and my promo code ANDONG, Incogni has a special offer for you, which is 20% off for the first 100 people who use it. That's incogni.com slash andong. Incogni is available risk-free for 30 days, which means anyone can try it out and get a full refund if they're not happy with the service. Thank you Incogni for sponsoring this video. All right, now let's do a cauliflower soup and try to make that without cheese. This time we're gonna be using regular onions, a few slices of ginger, some garlic, and finely chopped carrots as our flavor base. Sweat those in butter for a few minutes, then stir in about a tablespoon of regular flour. This is gonna be our thickener, which works surprisingly well. But now to our main flavor, good old Western style curry powder, my latest obsession. A quick word for my regular viewers here, I know I promised a history video for this week, which is indeed going to involve curry powder, but that story turned out to be so fascinating that it actually became a two-parter and it's gonna come out early next year. So stay tuned for that. But back to our soup, once you stir in the curry powder, add your liquid, which can again be water or stock, then bring it up to a boil, add your cauliflower, and after about 10 minutes of cooking with the lid on, it is time to get everything into a blender. We're gonna add some pepper and soy sauce, but then we're also gonna go for toasted sesame oil. I know, unusual, but the nutty note goes quite well with cauliflower in my opinion. Season that to taste with salt and a bit of MSG, then let the blender do what it does best. For this soup, we're gonna lean into the nutty flavor and top it with some roasted almonds, a bit of feta cheese, and yes, I know I said no cheese, but come on, it's a topping, it doesn't count, a few sprigs of cilantro, and lastly, a good drizzle of chili oil. Now this soup is, let's say, different. I think it has a ton of potential, it really does, but I also feel like something is missing. I had an old lemon around and squeezed in some of that, which actually made a huge difference, so maybe it's tanginess? I actually think the best way to find out is to ask you guys. If you have any idea what the missing piece could be for this type of soup, please let me know in the comments. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'm gonna be back next week with a very season-appropriate episode. Bye.